Hi guys, welcome back to Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to write C++ programs that can do this, and how to avoid doing this. If you haven't guessed it by now, what we're going to be talking about are while loops in C++. So let's get started. Now, in order to understand how a while loop works and what can go wrong with a while loop, we're going to need to understand the basic logic of the while loop. So while loop works like this. You're going to have a group of statements that are attached to a test expression. Okay, And so long as that test expression evaluates to true, you're going to execute those statements and continue executing those statements. Okay, So is the test expression true? If so, then execute the statement or statements, then go back up and check the test expression again. Okay, so, so long as that test expression is true, this is going to be happening. Now, as soon as the test expression evaluates to false, then you'll break out of the loop and continue on with the rest of your program. That's why it's important that you have some kind of a statement in your block of statements that eventually causes the test expression to evaluate to false. Otherwise, this loop will continue executing forever and ever and ever. Okay, it's known as an infinite loop. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example program that demonstrates this idea and shows you the syntax, the basic syntax for a lot while loop, shall we? Okay, so I have got Visual Studio ready to go. Okay, and we're going to show you the very basics of a while loop. All right, so for a while loop, what you have to have is you have to have the while keyword. Okay, then you have your test expression, whatever that may be, so long as it evaluates to true or false, and then you have a block that contains a statement or statements. Okay, so if your block only has one statement, then, or if your while loop only has one statement attached to it, then the curly braces are optional. Okay, so let's look at a quick example of a while loop, one that will just print out the words, or the word high, say five times. Okay, so we'll have a while loop test expression, and then we'll see out hi. Okay, now what should go in the test expression? Well, what I need to do is I need to have something that tells us when to stop, when to start. So what I'll make is, is I'll make a counter variable. Okay, a counter variable. And this variable is going to be responsible for counting how many times the loop repeats. Okay, so we're going to initialize it with zero. Okay, and by tradition, by convention, it's typically named as i. And so in the test expression, I can say, well, so long as i is less than 5, then go ahead and execute the body of the loop. Okay, so now you might look at that and go, oh, okay, um, that looks great. Are we done? Well, no, we're not done yet. Okay, we have to have something that causes this test expression to, to evaluate to false. Otherwise, we'll be stuck printing high forever and ever and ever. So to see that, trace through the code. Look at line 7. What's in i? 0. So when we get to line 9, is i less than 5? Yeah. 0 is less than 5, so that's true. So then we enter the body of the loop, just like within the flow, within the flow chart, right? Just like the flow chart demonstrated. So we would display high on the screen, and then we would go back to the, t back to the test expression, go back to the top of the loop. Well, is i still less than 5? Yeah, because i contains 0, right? So this is an example of an infinite loop so let's see what that looks like i'll go ahead and compile it and build it so you can see that that high is just running and 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 it's gonna it, that, that loop's just gonna keep on going um forever so one way you can stop the infinite loop is by hitting Control c at the console or in visual studio you can hit this little um square box right here and then i'll break you out of it okay so what do we do to make that 
not happen, right? How do we avoid that infinite loop? What we have to do is we have to include some statement, some kind of statement. We have to have some kind of code that causes this to eventually be false. So the easiest thing to do here would be, you know, to uh, maybe count up. So I equals I plus one. Okay, so every single time this block executes, I will now be incremented. Okay, so we're adding one to I. So when I is equal to zero, we check the test expression, zero less than five, yes. Enter the body of the loop, print out high, and then take I, which is zero, add one to zero, that'll be one, and then put that back in I. So now I has one in it. So you go back up to the top of the loop. Is one less than five? Yes. So you go into the body of the loop, see out high again, I goes up by one, okay? So I becomes two, then I will become three, then I will become four, and then I will become five, okay? Now when I is five, is five less than five? False. So we break out of the loop and we continue on with the program. Okay, let's put a little statement here after the while loop so we can see that. Goodbye. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. And see what that looks like. Okay, so you can see there's five highs there. One, two, three, four, five. And then the loop's over and we hit goodbye. Now I could easily, you know, make change this to execute 10 times by typing 10. Now notice I say I less than 10 because we're going to start counting at zero. That's one repetition, and then one, and then two, and then three, and then four, when i is four. i is five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 10 repetitions. As soon as i becomes 10, right, then the loop is going to end, okay? So change it, we're going to have 10 i's, right, or 10 highs. So let me scroll up there. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then the goodbye. Okay. Now you can see this play out if all we do was print out the contents of I. So I'll just do C out I with a space. Okay. So now when we run this, you'll be able to see that it goes from zero through nine. Right? So for every repetition of the loop, you can see what's in I. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We don't see 10. Why? Because when I contains 10, then 10 is not less than 10. So that's false. So we break out of the loop. Okay. Now you have to be very careful with how you write these test expressions because what if you say, well, while I is less than or equal to 10? Well, then when I is 10, 10 is equal to 10, so that's true. So you get one more repetition in there, okay? So you got to be very careful about how you construct your test expressions so that way you get the correct number of repetitions, okay? So now it may be the case that you wanted to print out the numbers 1 through 10, say. Okay, well, then just initialize this counter variable to 1, okay? And then you can see that we're going to see 1 through 10. Okay. So no infinite loop. And we've got control over, you know, what's in I, right? We just initialize I here to 1, and then we go, go up through 10. Okay. Um, now, we got to be careful because, you know, if you're counting up, if you're counting down, what happens if instead I was decreasing I by 1 each time? Well, I would start off at 1, right? So 1 is less than or equal to 10. That's true. So we would print out I, but then we would decrement I by 1. And so if I do that, I'm going in the wrong direction. I'm going away from causing my test expression to evaluate to false, right? So I'm going down. I need to get up to 10, and instead I'm going negative. So you got to be very, very, very careful. Now, this little update expression here, updating I, you can also, I mean, you can change this in all kinds of different ways, right? What if I only wanted to see the numbers one, you know, what if I want to go up by two each time? Well, then I could just say I equals I plus two, right? So then let's run that and see how that changes things. Okay. 
so now you see it's one, three, five, seven, nine. Why? Well, I started with one, okay? So then we got to line nine with that test expression is one less than or equal to 10, true. Enter the by the loop, line 11, print out the one, and then add two to I. So I becomes three, go out up to the top of the loop. Is three less than or equal to 10, true. Enter the by the loop, print out the three, add two to that three, it's five. Go to the top of the loop, is five less than or equal to 10, true. Go into the loop, print out the I, see five, add two to five, or excuse me, yeah, add two to five, <laughs> I become seven, go back up to the top of the loop, is seven less than or equal to 10, true. Go into the by the loop, print out the seven, add two to seven, I now contains nine, go back to the top of the loop, is nine less than or equal to 10, true. Enter the by the loop, print out the nine, and then add two to the nine, so I now contains 11, go to the top of the loop, is 11 less than or equal to 10, false. Skip over the by the loop and print out your goodbye. So there's no reason why we can't use a variable instead of the 10 here. So we could do something like int reps equals 10 and then replace the 10 with reps, okay? And then you'll see that it's gonna work the exact same. Okay, now let's take that a step further and we'll let the user um, enter in the value and let's say we'll create a loop that counts up okay so we'll ask the user uh, see out enter a number for me to count up to okay and then we'll read that in all right and we'll leave i at one and so this loop is going to start from i and go up through whatever number the user uh, enters right so let's go up by one, okay? And then uh, let's try it out. Okay, so I want you to count up to uh, 10, okay? So hit enter, and then you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, goodbye. I started off with one, you know, and then um, so long as I, was less than or equal to whatever was in reps, that, that example 10, then the loop's gonna keep on going, right? Um, but we could have done, say, seven, right? So we can let the user control the loop in this way. Um, you can also, let's take another step further, right? So how about we'll create a variable called multiple, and then we'll say, see out, uh, what multiple do you want me to count in, right? What multiple do you want me to count in? Okay, so then we'll see in multiple. Okay, so I mean, all of these steps are just are just um, building on each other, right? Everything's kind of interrelated. So we'll just add to i whatever the multiple is. Okay. So let's go ahead and then run that. Okay, so now we'll enter the reps. Okay, so we're going to count up to um, 25, right? But this time we want it to count, you know, say from one to six to 11. So we're gonna go up by five each time. So you can see then there's one, six, 11, 16, 21, and then goodbye, right? So we didn't see 26 because 26 was greater than 25. Remember what was in reps was 25. So as soon as I contain 26, well, that, that's not less than or equal to 25. So the loop is over, okay? so. There are your basics for how you can use a while loop. So what did I show you? So I showed you the basic syntax of while loops. I showed you how users can control the number of repetitions in your while loops by getting input from the user. Uh, I showed you how to avoid infinite loops, or I showed you the problem of infinite loops and how you can fix them. And you know, just gave you a good overall view of the basics of while loops. If you thought the video was useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, give it a thumbs down as well. Please consider supporting the channel in multiple ways. You've got comments, you've got super thanks. You can join as a member for additional perks for as little as 99 cents. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. Stop by my office hours, hit me up on Zoom, you know, whatever. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.